Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, having finished chapter 3, which was telecommunication, today I want us to begin on a new chapter, chapter 4, which is radioactivity. So for us to understand this whole concept of radioactivity, students, we need to understand first the concept of matter. And you know, matter is anything that occupies space and has got mass or weight. And one important feature or characteristic of matter is that its basic unit is called an atom. 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 You know that atom is the basic unit of matter. And an atom has got subatomic particles constituting it or making it. Those subatomic particles are the protons. We have, it has got protons. It has got neutrons. And it has got electrons. And as we learned before, we know protons of an electron are positively charged they have a positive charge and they are in the nucleus of an atom, which means the center of an atom. Neutrons are neutral. They are neutral. They do not have a charge, zero charge. Also, they are present in the nucleus or the center of an atom. And then you have got electrons which are negatively charged. Negatively charged, they have got a negative charge and they orbit the nucleus, which means they are in the energy shells or energy levels around the nucleus of an atom. So these three subatomic particles are going to be very important for us to understand the concept of radioactivity. So what is radioactivity? Radioactivity simply means the emission or release of subatomic particles and energy from the nucleus of an atom. How do you release something from the nucleus of an atom? There must be some process taking place. That process is disintegration. The disintegration or breakdown can be the disintegration of a proton or of a neutron. Why do we say it is a proton or a neutron but not electron? Because here we see that this is the emission of subatomic particles and energy from the nucleus of an atom. And the only subatomic particles that are present in the nucleus of an atom are protons and neutrons. So an atom whose number of protons and neutrons are not balanced, are not the same, will undergo radioactivity for it to become stable, which means it will give out excess neutrons or give out excess protons for it to gain a stability stature or status. So, for radioactivity to take place, there's an involvement of proton or neutron in the nucleus of an atom being emitted. And elements which emit radiation from the nucleus are called radioactive elements. So we have just said, for you to talk of a radioactive material, that material must be unstable. A radioactive material is unstable, which means the number of protons and the number of neutrons in its nucleus center are not the same. So in a bid or in an effort to ensure that the number of protons and neutrons become stable or become the same or become balanced, it will tend to release the excess ones. And in that case, we will be talking about an unstable atom trying to gain stability through a radioactive process by emitting either radiations, which are energies, or subatomic particles, which can either be alpha or beta. Then we talk about types of radiations. These subatomic particles or energy released from the nucleus of atoms. We talk about subatomic particles. These are physical things that you can see moving. 
And that is where we have got these types. We have got alpha and beta. These are the subatomic particles released from the nucleus of an atom. While we talk about energy here, this is where we have got gamma. When you learn about electromagnetic radiations, you realize that gamma is a form of an electromagnetic radiation. It is an energy. It is not something that you can physically see. It is just an energy. And it has got a very high amount of energy. Actually, it is number one in the electromagnetic spectrum with the highest amount of energy and frequency and the smallest wavelength ever. So you have got two particles, alpha particle, beta particle, and then an energy, which is gamma. All these three are three types of radiations that are released from the nucleus of an atom when it undergoes radioactive disintegration or radioactive decay. Alpha here, this symbol is alpha, it's a Greek word which means fast. This one translated to English is A. Alpha is the same as A. The first radiation to be discovered, number one radiation to be discovered, alpha A. Number two, or the next one to be discovered in Greek was beta. So it's like beta is just in English, it is just B, the second one to be discovered. And then we have got our gamma here to be the third and last one in Greek. So what you need to recap here is that there are three types of radiations. You have got the alpha, you have got the beta, and then you have got the gamma radiations. Let us look into them into a bit more detail. We have got number one, alpha radiation. We said that alpha was the first radiation to be discovered by scientists. It is a positively charged particle from the nucleus of a radioactive element. We know positively charged, which means it has got a positive charge, a plus. Positively charged, it has got a plus. Which means it's charged. If it forms an ion, the ion will have a positive charge on it. And we are saying that it is a helium nucleus. What do you know about helium? From your periodic table, from your list of elements, what do you know about helium? Helium is an element that has got two protons and two neutrons. A helium, helium, let us see it here. With that formula, helium has got two protons and two neutrons. So if we say that alpha radiation is a helium atom, then we mean that alpha radiation or alpha emission or alpha particle also has got two protons and two neutrons and therefore it does not have any electron. And that tells you that if an alpha particle becomes an ion, then its ion will have a positive 2 because of the two protons here. And you learned about representation of elements using atomic number and mass numbers. For example, if you have got an element X, this X can be any element, sodium, lithium, helium, hydrogen, whatever it is. Down here you will have your atomic number, which is the same as the number of protons present in the nucleus of that at atom. And up here you will have what is called the mass number. And mass number is gotten by adding protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. So if you have got a helium here with two protons and two neutrons, and we say that alpha is the same as helium with two protons and two neutrons, then from the foregoing, we can easily say that the formula of alpha, of course this is the formula of alpha, but representing it with atomic number and mass numbers, we know the subscript here, the lower number, is the subscript is the atomic number, which is 
the number of protons. A number of protons here are two. So we replace it here with two. And the superscript, the number up, represents the mass number. And we've said that mass number, mass number, mass number A here is given by number of protons plus number of neutrons. And we have said that a helium has got two protons and two neutrons. So two plus two is four. That is why the mass number here is four. So this is the formula of alpha radiation or alpha particle. And because we have said that it, it is similar or the same as helium, we can easily replace this particular alpha with a helium formula and put the number of protons here, which is the atomic number, and then the mass number up there, which is the addition of protons plus neutrons. Let us move to the second one, which is beta particle or beta radiation. We have said beta here is the second radiation to be discovered by scientists. And this is an electron emitted from the nucleus of an atom. How do you, how do you achieve a star as where an electron comes from the nucleus of an atom? We have just said that in the nucleus of an atom, there are only two subatomic particles, the neutron and the proton. But here in beta, we are saying that an electron is coming from the nucleus. If this is an atom, the nucleus is here, the center here. It has only protons and neutrons. Electrons are outside here. But we are saying that in beta, an electron is emitted from the nucleus here. How does that happen? That means this particular atom must be having excess neutrons compared to protons. So the excess neutron disintegrates or splits up or breaks down to form a proton and an electron. So in beta, we have got a neutron, one, which is excess, splitting into proton and an electron. And because a proton can easily stay in the nucleus of the atom, this proton will remain in the nucleus. But the electron cannot stay in the nucleus, and therefore the force, the nuclear force here is going to eject it into the energy shells. And therefore we talk about an emission, an emission or a rejection of an electron from the nucleus or from the center of an atom towards the energy shells. That's why we talk about beta being an electron moving with some kind of speed. And its formula is beta, which is here. And we have realized that only one electron is being emitted. And an electron has got a negative charge, like you saw here. There's a negative charge of an electron. That is why in this formula, you have got a negative here and one. So one electron and electron is negatively charged. And because it is an electron, it means we don't have a proton here, we don't have a neutron here. So proton is zero and neutron zero. So zero plus zero is zero. So mass number is zero. Because in beta particle, there is virtually no proton and no neutron. Zero proton plus zero neutron is zero mass number. That is why you have got mass number to be zero. But one electron was emitted, so we have got atomic number to be negative one because it's an electron. This E is an electron. We have said that it is an electron. So E is an electron, one electron, and zero mass number. We move to the third, which is gamma radiation. You realize that the first two Alpha and beta are particles. Number three, which is gamma, gamma is not a particle. 
Gamma instead is a radiation, is an energy, all right? An electromagnetic energy. So this is a high energy electromagnetic radiation emitted or given out from the nucleus of an atom. So basically, we are saying that gamma, in gamma we don't have anything called a proton, we don't have anything called a neutron, we don't have anything called an electron. In this particular case, it is energy given out. Just like you can feel right now, if you get out of the hall outside, you will realize that you will feel some heat on your skin. That heat comes from the sun because of a radioactive process taking place, nuclear fusion taking place at the center of the sun. So it comes down in form of energy, no particle in that particular case. And therefore, we don't have anything to, be, to do with an atomic number or number of protons because there are no protons in this energy. We don't have mass number because there is no proton, there is no neutron. So if neutron is zero, proton is zero, zero plus zero will give you zero. So you just have this particular gamma symbol. Because here is zero and here is zero, there is no need of writing them. Because zero is a no number. It has got nothing, no value. So you remove and you have a gamma like that. All these things have got characteristics. The alpha, the beta, and the gamma, they have got characteristics. And one characteristic that is very important in this class today is the penetratability of these particular radiations or particles on certain objects. That is why we come here to the penetrating power of the radiation. The radiations here are alpha, beta, and gamma. We are going to take three materials. We have got a piece of paper. We have got an aluminum. This alum it can be an aluminum block or a piece of wood. Loh. And then you have got lead. These three materials have got different strengths and different thicknesses. A piece of paper, a piece of paper, just like this one here. This is a piece of paper. The thickness here is very small. If you compare it to a piece of wood, wood, for example, a chair, a chair, or you can take a ruler, this is wood. The thickness, the thickness of this ruler here and the thickness of this paper here are different. This one is smaller, this one is larger or this one is thinner and this one is thicker if you have got another thing a metal called lead with a larger or a longer width compared to that of the ruler then you realize that the thickness here is smaller than the thickness here and this thickness is also smaller than this so the penetrating power of each radiation will enable them to either go through a material or be blocked by that material. Look at it this way. Alpha is very heavy. It is a heavy material, it's a heavy particle. And therefore, its ability to move, its velocity of movement is very small. Its ability to move is little. It has got a little ability to move. And therefore, it can easily be stopped by a piece of paper its energy is small. It has got a large size, but a small amount of energy. And therefore, only a piece of paper can stop alpha. That is why you see this thing reaching here, the arrow here reaching here, which means the alpha particle moves, and when it knocks on a paper, the paper will block it from penetration. It will stick here. Its large size, and low amount of energy makes it to be stopped by that paper, just a small sheet of paper. On the other hand, beta, which is a little smaller than alpha, but with a little more energy than alpha, will go through the paper, 
but when it reaches an aluminum block or a piece of wood which is relatively thicker than the paper it will be stopped so this tells you that beta has got a moderate penetrating power compared to alpha and gamma however gamma being a radiation a high energy radiation will go through a paper it will go through the aluminum and it will go into the lead but after a given thickness the lead will stop it you have to know that alpha is positively charged beta is negatively charged but gamma has no charge so this charge will make this particular alpha and beta to be deflected in fields so that deflection in simpler term we can talk about friction so their energy content they definitely have small amount of energy but that small one is again being deteriorated further by attraction or deflection in a field so that's why they have got a lower penetrating power as compared to gamma which does not have any charge it just goes through straight through these particular materials and because of its high energy and frequency it can go through the small sheet of paper the relatively thinner block of wood or aluminum block but the thick lead will stop it let us move to another concept well now that we have finished on the penetrating power of each radiation next time we will have to move into the general characteristics or properties of these radiations which include also the penetrating power goodbye and thank you